Meet Frank Morris. He has an IQ of 122, the top 2% in the country. His parents abandoned him when he was just 11. As you can guess, he had a tough childhood. He has been in and out of prison ever since. Today, he was transferred to a high-security prison. This high-security prison is located on an island, just one and a half miles from the shores of a big city. From the prison yard, Frank can see the city's skyline. He can almost see the people walking freely along the shore. The water that surrounds the prison is insanely cold, and the currents are strong and rough. It's about as deadly a swim as anyone could imagine. Let's have a look at the prison itself. The island contains several buildings. The cell blocks with all the detained prisoners. On the right, there's a small recreation yard from which you can see the skyline of the city. To the left of the cell blocks is the warden's house. There's Building 64, where the military officers and their families live. On the northwest side of this island is a social hall for the workers and their families. The industrial building serves as a workshop and a laundry facility. On top of that, there's the water tower, a lighthouse, and a power station. The prison has one guard for every three inmates, four times more than an ordinary prison. The cell blocks themselves were built about 50 to 60 years ago, which makes them very old. There are three main blocks, A, B, and D, a library and a dining hall. Every cell is about 9 by 5 feet, just enough for one person. Inside the cell is a bed, a desk, a toilet, a sink, and an air vent the size of a shoebox. The vent leads to an unguarded utility corridor, which leads to the roof of the cells. Right above it is a ventilator that leads to the roof of the entire cell block. From the rooftop, there are various pipes that lead down to the ground. The three cell blocks are surrounded by a fence. Past the fence is a footpath straight down to the water. But remember, the air vent in every cell is way too small to fit through. An armed guard does a head count of everyone in this block every day, every two hours. There is no way to access a weapon. Even the forks and spoons are laid out after each meal and carefully counted. Now let's see how Frank is doing. During his first days on the inside, he made friends with two brothers who were caught busting out of the state penitentiary. He also became friends with the inmate in the next cell. One day, Frank decided that this prison just wasn't for him. He talked to his three friends, and they all decided to see what they could get a hold of. One of the brothers worked at the prison barber shop, and the rest worked at the workshop two days a week. Here is what they got. One spoon made of stainless steel that Frank managed to steal from the canteen. Not that hard if you're a guy with an IQ of 122. A box of matches. He just traded for them with another prisoner. 50 raincoats made of plastic or some rubber-like material. Inmates agreed to donate theirs, and the guards didn't notice they were missing raincoats. Human hair. One of the friends worked at the barber shop, so he scored an unlimited supply of hair. Glue. Slaving away at the workshop gives you access to the tubes of waterproof glue. An unlimited amount of magazines and newspapers. Nobody wants to read anyway, so the library has tons of magazines and newspapers lying around. A broken vacuum cleaner. Let's just keep it a secret where they got it from. A bit of mystery never killed anyone. Discarded saw blades. Once again, the workshop is a great source for tools if you have an IQ of 122. Cardboard and paint. The prison actually gives paints and cardboard to those who want to pass the time by painting in their cells. Now, the question is, can they escape this prison? A hint. The buildings are old, very old. Thank you.
they can. In fact, three prisoners, Frank Morris and brothers John and Clarence Anglin, escaped in 1962 from the world's most famous prison, Alcatraz. And here's how they did it. Preparation steps for escape needed six months. They used the matches to weld the spoon into a digging tool. The digging tool was used to break off some of the rotting wall around the air vent. Next was to use the cardboard and paint to make a plaster copy of the grill on the vent and the wall around it. A fake vent. The magazines, glue, paint, and hair were used to make a dummy head. Once the hole in the air vent was big enough, they squeezed through the air vent and climbed up to the roof of the cell. There, they made a drill out of the old vacuum cleaner to cut a hole in the ventilation shaft. Lastly, they used the 50 raincoats and glue to make life vests and a raft and left them on the roof of their cells. Final step, back to their cells to wait for the perfect day. Escape. They placed the dummies in the beds to trick the guards, went through the hole in the air vent, climbed to the roof of their cells, took the life vests and raft that they had left there before, climbed out through the ventilation, climbed down from the roof and scaled the fence, made their way to the water and floated out on the raft. Now they had a nine-hour head start, the cover of night, and a desperate drive to escape. The only question is, could they swim one and a half miles in freezing water? Tell me in the comments whether you think it's possible or not to swim one and a half miles in the dark with strong currents and reach the other side safely.